Hey you guys and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Holly and thank you so so much for watching. Today I wanted to cover the case of Tara Costigan. I thought I would quickly add before we started that my little Paddle Pop ice creams are from my friend's small business called the Aurora Collective which I will link below if any of you guys want to check her out. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Today I wanted to cover the case of Tara Costigan. She was born on the 19th of August 1986 in Canberra and for those of you that aren't too familiar with Australia Canberra is the capital city of Australia there's a fun little fact for you you're welcome so growing up Tara unfortunately didn't have the best relationship with her parents in fact from about three weeks old she actually ended up in the care on and off of her grandmother Margaret Costigan and her grandfather did a lot to look after her too Margaret herself in a few interviews has said that Trish, who was Tara's birth mum, had quite a few kids to a lot of different people and she just got overwhelmed quite a lot of the time. And so she really struggled to look after Tara. But the good thing was that Tara's grandmother was just absolutely in love with Tara. She loved looking after her. Sadly, as well as this, Tara's father, who was called Tony Costigan, ended up committing suicide when Tara was about eight and a half. He was the son of Margaret Costigan, and I think he suffered with his own mental health issues, and unfortunately, he ended up committing suicide when Tara was only seven and a half. So Tara didn't really grow up with her parents in her life, and I can't imagine how hard that would be for a child to grow up without their parents in their life, but despite all of this, Tara had a really big, loving family, she just loved her grandmother. She had a load of aunties and uncles who just looked after her and she was a really bubbly child. She had a lot of support from her grandmother, aunties, uncles and cousins and she actually had one cousin in particular who's called the Nathan Costigan who she grew up with hanging out all the time. They were like two peas in a pod. They were just always together and it just seems like Tara was a real family oriented person and I think that that can be backed up by how her auntie spoke about her. In a few interviews and whatnot, her auntie speaks about her and it's just so nice. She says that Tara was just a bubbly, hardworking, loyal, mischievous person. She was just generally fun. Everyone loved Tara. She was that person that was the life of a party. She had this infectious energy and everyone just always wanted to be around her. When Tara was only 16, she came to find out that she was actually pregnant. She had a beautiful little boy named Riley and her family was just so supportive of her. Two years later, Tara had another little baby boy whose name was Drew. And so by 18, Tara was the mum of two. She absolutely loved these boys. Tara was such a dedicated, hardworking mum who just wanted the best for her babies. She knew what it was like to grow up without solid parental figures around and she just wanted to be the exact opposite for her boys. And she proved to this. I mean, she worked so hard. She had a job in aged care as well as two other jobs that she worked a lot of the time. One was in hairdressing and I don't actually know what the other job was, but I know that she did work three jobs. Unfortunately, her relationship with the boy's dad broke down, but this didn't stop Tara from working hard and earning enough money to get herself and her two little boys a place of their own to stay, which she paid for all by herself. And they were a happy little family of three. Tara only wanted the best education for her boys, so she put them in a little private school, which she again paid for by herself with the money that she earned from those jobs that she worked. Around the same time, Tara decided it was time to fully cut ties with her mum Trish. I didn't really mention this but Trish was in and out of Tara's life her whole life until she was 18 but for whatever reason Tara had decided it was finally time to fully cut that relationship off but this wasn't really a bad thing because in turn it meant that she became a whole lot closer with her grandmother Margaret again and also her auntie Maria. They all lived really close by to each other so Tara started seeing them all the time. A few years went by and and Tara continued to work and look after her kids and she was happy but she felt like she wanted someone to share her life with and her dream of sharing her life with someone came true at the end of 2013 when she met a man by the name of Marcus Rappel. Now there's conflicting stories as to how they met
met, but it was either through a dating app, which is what Tara's grandmother Margaret believes is the way that they met, or through a mutual friend, which is sort of the more generally believed way that Tara met Marcus. But either way, however they met, they hit it off straight away. When Tara met Marcus, he was a tradie who owned his own bricklaying business, and he was actually 39 years old. Tara would have been 26 or 27. I don't know the exact date that they met, but it would have been mid to end of 2013. When Tara's family met Marcus, they said that he was nice, but he was quite quiet. They didn't really think too much of it. They thought that maybe he was just quite shy. And Tara was really happy too, so they had no reason to believe anything bad of Marcus. She really thought that Marcus was the man that she was going to be with forever, and he tried so hard to be what Tara needed. He provided for her, and he really put a lot of effort into her children, and Tara really respected him for that because not a lot of people are willing to come into someone's life and be there in the relationship for their partner but also take on the role of looking after their children. But Marcus was truly invested and Tara couldn't have been happier. It is interesting though because although Tara was just so besotted with Marcus, a lot of people that he worked with he was a bricklayer. A lot of people that he worked with said differently. He could be described as arrogant, very insecure, and someone who struggled to control his temper at times. And Marcus also suffered from mental health issues, which he had for a long time. He had tried to overdose on painkillers when he was just 18 in 1992 or 1993. And when he was 32 in 2006 or 2007, he was actually diagnosed with manic depression. Unfortunately, in 2014, not long into this new relationship that Marcus had started with Tara, he got involved in the use of both anabolic steroids and ice. Now, anabolic steroids can build muscle and improve athletic performance, which is probably why Marcus was using them, but they do have side effects too, especially when used incorrectly, and this can result in heart issues, unwanted physical changes, and aggression. Now, ice, or more commonly known Known as crystal methamphetamine or meth is a pretty hard drug as I'm sure most of you guys would know. It's a stimulant and it can keep you up for days. It's highly addictive too and look I'm sure most of you guys know what ice or meth is but its side effects can also include aggression, agitation, confusion or in more serious cases strokes, heart attack or death. So as I'm sure you guys can imagine, things started to go south pretty quickly. Tara's family didn't actually understand the extent of how bad the relationship had gotten, but this was because Tara didn't really want them to know. She became quite private and Margaret, her grandmother, knew that something wasn't quite right, but she didn't really know what at first. But Tara stopped calling, she stopped coming over, and she also did the same thing with her auntie Maria. So they both started having their suspicions of what was going on. Now Marcus had actually had a child to another woman whose name was Kira not long before he got with Tara. And Marcus hadn't actually met this baby due to the fact that Kira had put in a DVO on Marcus before the baby was born. But a few months into Marcus being with Tara, he told Tara that he wanted to see his little baby. I'm guessing Kira had a agreed to this. So when Marcus approached Tara about seeing his baby girl who he had had with Kira, Tara supported him fully. She wanted this for Marcus. Although she wasn't happy about the fact that he was back in contact with his ex, Tara was able to push that aside for the sake of the baby. She just wanted Marcus to be happy. He had been acting really aggressive recently and she was hoping that by letting him see his baby, he would treat her nicer. Although things Things weren't great. In about July of 2014, Tara actually found out that she was pregnant with Marcus's baby. It was a little baby girl and Tara was absolutely thrilled. She absolutely adored children and had actually been planning to go to uni and study to become a midwife when her oldest son Riley went to high school, which would have been in 2016. And when Tara found out she was pregnant, her sister Ricky Schmidt actually ended up moving into 
Tara's house just to help out with the kids. And although Ricky was thrilled for Tara to be expecting another baby, she soon learned that Tara and Marcus's relationship was pretty toxic. Ricky said that one night she saw them fighting and Marcus cracked his knuckles and said something along the lines of, if you don't stop talking, that will be the last thing that you do. To make matters worse, in early 2015, when Tara was about eight months pregnant, she found messages on Marcus's phone between him and Kira that showed that they were more than just co-parenting their little baby. And Tara had had suspicions that Marcus was cheating on her with Kira, but you know, I, I think whenever you're in that situation, you always want to hope the best of someone and hope that they're not. But yeah, unfortunately, Tara found out that her suspicions were right. And of course, Tara was so angry. She was livid and she briefly ended the relationship. But like I said, she was eight months pregnant with his baby and she wanted to make things work, you know? She saw the best in Marcus and she wanted him to be around when her baby was born and so they got back together. Not long after though, in late January, Tara and Marcus had another big blow up and this one was so bad that Tara actually decided that this time for real she was going to end things and she was she was serious. She was so close to having her baby girl and she she didn't want to bring a new baby into a toxic environment where people were always fighting. And although she loved Marcus, she just wanted what was best for her baby girl and her kids. So Tara gave birth to her daughter Ayla in mid-February of 2015. And unfortunately, it was not entirely the peaceful experience that Tara had hoped for. Apparently Marcus came ranting and raving into the hospital when Ayla was born, saying things like, this isn't my kid and I know about the other man and he only stayed for about 10 minutes before he stormed back out again. And the only reason Tara invited him was because she wanted him to have this relationship with his baby but Marcus was making it pretty clear that he was just not interested. And that same night Marcus actually found out that he was expecting another baby with Kira. Marcus had gone straight back to Kira when Tara had kicked him out and she knew this but I think it still really really hurt to know that Kira was expecting a baby because it hadn't really been that long. I guarantee she didn't need the extra stress though right after having a baby. And the behavior from Marcus just went from bad to worse. In the next few days he was sending text messages to Tara, Margaret and a few other family members just harassing them, verbally abusing them. And Tara was so done. She decided this was it. She was going to go to the courts and get a domestic violence order against him. And she did. On the 27th of February she went to court and she got one and of course this only enraged Marcus even more. The domestic violence order was sent to Marcus who showed it to Kira and she noticed there were a few dates on the DVO where Tara had said that Marcus had been at her house and on those dates Kira had been told by Marcus that he was actually somewhere else and not seeing Tara. It was all just so so messy and of course then Kira was so angry at Marcus because he had been lying to her and she broke up with him saying that she couldn't be with someone who didn't base their life around being honest. This whole situation angered Marcus even more and he went to Bunnings and bought himself an axe. He then drove straight to where Tara lived and he actually noticed in the driveway Ricky's partner's car was there and so he waited 45 minutes. You can see on CCTV footage him driving back and forth down the road past the house for 45 minutes until Ricky's partner's car left and straight after he left Marcus parked his car on the driveway and got out and attacked Tara. Tara's two boys who would have been about 9 and 11 when this happened and Ricky were actually the first ones to see Marcus when he arrived and the boys came running in from outside screaming trying to get back into the apartment and because of this commotion Tara came to the front door holding her six day old baby to see what was going on. Marcus saw Tara and at this point he made a beeline for her. He was screaming and raging and just carrying on and at this 
this point, Ricky was standing in front of Tara, almost trying to protect him, but Marcus didn't care. He just swung at them. So Marcus hit Tara right in the neck and she fell to the ground straight away. He also hit Ricky too when he hit Tara and he severed a tendon in her little finger. Ricky knew this whole situation was really, really bad and she called triple zero straight away. You can actually hear this triple zero call on YouTube and I would encourage you guys to watch it if you want. I'll link it below. You can just tell how panicked she is and you can hear Marcus in the background just yelling and screaming and carrying on too. By this point, the neighbors had heard all the commotion and also Ricky's partner was back and they were the ones that held down Marcus until the police came. They didn't take too long to come to the scene. But Ricky tried everything to stop Tara bleeding out. She was just bleeding absolutely everywhere and Ricky knew, like I said, that this was really bad. She told Tara that her boys were safe and she would take care of them and Tara had nothing to worry about. And not long after that, Tara took her last breath. On the 28th of February 2015, Tara sadly died at her apartment block from blood loss from the axe wound from Marcus. You guys, I wanted to take this point to talk a little bit about domestic violence. One in six women and one in 16 men have experienced physical and or sexual violence by a current or previous partner. One in four women and one in six men have experienced emotional abuse by a current or previous partner. And one in five women and one in 20 men have been sexually assaulted and or threatened. On top of this, within Australia, every nine days, one woman is murdered and one male is murdered every 29 days by a partner of theirs. And within up to a quarter of these cases, the first time that person may experience physical violence is the time that they die. And this is what happened with Tara. Marcus had never been physically violent violent towards her before. He had spat at her and he had been verbally aggressive. In fact, the day before her murder, she told her uncle he had nothing to worry about because Marcus had never hit her. She thought that she was safe. Marcus, of course, was taken by police straight away and he pled guilty to the murder of Tara, which meant that there was going to be no trial. Tara's family hoped that Marcus would be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. But unfortunately, how the system works in this type of case is that if they admit guilt then they usually see a reduction of about 25% of their sentencing. Marcus was actually escorted out of the court before he got his sentencing as he was just making a ruckus. He was yelling out to the judge saying the judge was lying and that he, Marcus, was the only honest one there and he got escorted to a different room so unfortunately we will never know what his reaction was to the sentence. I kind of would have liked to have known but on February 24th 2007 17, he was sentenced to 32 years and two months in prison with a non-parole period of 26 years for murder, breaching a domestic violence order and two counts of assault. Although the family of Tara knew that Marcus probably wouldn't get life in prison, they really still did hope that he would and I can totally understand why. Trish Fuller, which is Tara's mum, said it should have been forever. Whatever he did is never going to bring her back. This has been just devastating. In August of 2017, Marcus and four other inmates were accused of bashing two brothers in their cell at Alexander Machonochi Center. I don't know how to pronounce that. I hope that was right. Which is a prison in Canberra. Both brothers had to go to hospital, one with life-threatening injuries. And for this, Marcus got six years, three more years of non-parole. So at this point, he'll be 69 when eligible for parole. And he has also been transferred to the Goulburn Supermax prison where I personally hope he stays until he dies. An interesting fact is that Maria Costigan actually worked for the Canberra prison when Marcus was there. I actually have a lot of respect for Maria. I heard her talk on a podcast and she just seems so level headed and I really feel like she's been able to work through this trauma and just become better from it. It's just something about the way that she speaks. I just feel like she's there. She also just seems like such a fun auntie. She seems like the fun auntie that anyone would want and I kind of want her to be my auntie, Maria. Will you adopt me, please? Maria said that she doesn't spend any energy thinking about Marcus. She just wants him to know that he's down there in prison and she is up here a free woman, happily living her life. And I think that is the best way that you could look at something like this. I'm sure you guys are also wondering what happened to Tara's kids. And the two boys, Drew and Riley, live with their father, who isn't Marcus, by the way. I know I said that at the beginning, but I just wanted to clear that up. And Tara's baby girl, 
who is not a baby anymore, she'd now be about six, lives with one of Tara's aunts. This case isn't all sad though, because some good did come from Tara's death. The Tara Costigan Foundation was created and ran for four years, helping over a hundred families rebuild their lives. Sadly, in 2018 though, it closed down due to not getting enough funding. But Tara's Angels is a program run by Baptist Care in Canberra, which is a program that continues to support people experiencing domestic violence. And with that, you guys, I come to the end of this case. I will link a lot of domestic violence resources down below if you guys are curious I would really encourage you guys to have a read of what I linked below I found a couple of really good websites and whatnot that are from the government and stuff so they've got a lot of good information on them thank you so much for watching you guys and I hope I will see you in my next one bye you guys